What up, what up, YouTube? Alex coming back at you with another StarCraft 2 cast. On the bottom right hand side of the map, we have our red Zerg player, Lepidoptera. We'll call him Optera for short. And on the top left hand side of the map, we have our blue Protoss player, Macha Maniac. We'll call him Maniac for short. This is going to be a gold versus gold level matchup. So. It should be a fun one today. If you are new to my channel, I do cast games from a wide range of leagues, ranging all the way down from bronze to masters. So, if casual games are something you're interested in watching, please consider shooting me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Now, back to the show. We see what is going to be a very early drone coming out of Optera right here, and we don't have a hatchery or a spawning pool just yet, so I wonder... I wonder if this is going to be a proxy hatchery right here. Optera, this is a very early drone. Typically, we do not see early drone scouts coming from Zerg players in PvZ matchups. Usually, it is the Overlord that, that gets the scouting information. And Maniac, I guess he wasn't satisfied with the placement of that gateway. Decided to put it back just a little bit. But I'll be honest, I think it was fine. And man, Optera, this drone is being super sussy right now, dude. I don't know what you're planning to do with this thing because on the minimap, I see what is going to be... What is going to be a hatchery and Maniac doing a great job at making sure he has scouting information all around his main base. Realize that something suspicious is going on and able to spot that drone so i wonder if optera was thinking about doing a proxy hatch and decided against it and my apologies i thought we were looking at the production tab on the top left right here but it was on the upgrades tab so that is my bad now we do have the spawning pool following up with this hatchery so this is going to be a more or less standard play coming out of our red zerg player but regardless, Maniac is like, look, I'm not letting my eyes go off this off this drone. It was acting super suspicious, and I want to make sure it goes back home where it belongs. <laughs> and our red Zerg player going for the third hatchery right here. So we see what is going to be a likely macro play coming out of Optera, able to surround that probe and take it out. So that probe... Went to the wrong neighborhood, man. It went somewhere it was not welcome. Got surrounded by drones and quite literally eaten alive. And I think we had what was a little bit of a supply block with two pylons right here, followed by a very late expansion. So, Maniac, not, not coming at us with the tightest build order, what I would have done in this situation with that supply blocked zealot is cancel the zealot forgo the two pylons that's 300 minerals right there that would easily give you enough to build a nexus a nexus is 400 minerals so maniac will have a bit of a late expansion right here he is going to have his first expansion done after zerg is already on three bases we see what is going to be the third hatchery already finished and the nexus in the natural base isn't even finished yet it's just about three quarters of the way done but we see what is going to be a stargate so we may see some oracle harassment right here optera trying to walk through the front door but this is too many zealots for those zerglings to deal with this overlord will spot this stargate and it's not going to be oracles i thought it was going to be oracles it's actually going to be phoenixes this overlord does manage to spot it and it's not moving it's like man i'm way too slow to deal with a phoenix i'm just gonna stare at this thing until it's done and let myself get put out of my misery even faster that poor overlord rest in peace overlord uh we didn't give you a name it was too late to give you a name and i am so sorry for that but this will cost our zerg a hundred minerals and it will give Optera knowledge of what's happening and what's coming out of the Stargate right here. So even though that was a lost overlord for our Zerg player, it did give him quite valuable information because now he knows it's not going to be oracles coming out of that Stargate. It's actually going to be phoenixes, which is kind of reassuring. Oracles are, I think, a little bit scarier. Sure, the phoenixes can snipe overlords and they can lift queens and they can still harass mineral lines but oracles are just so much better at harassing mineral lines i would throw down 
a few spore crawlers we do see a triangle of spores right here in the main base what i would also do is throw down a spore crawler in the in the natural base and in the third base two queens would be able to handle two phoenixes but optera doesn't necessarily know if it's only two phoenixes out right here until right now maniac doing a good job at scouting to see what tech Optera might have does lose one of those phoenixes to that spore crawler though so now there's really not a lot of harassment that that phoenix can do other than find some straggling overlords and we see what is going to be a lot of zealots is charge on the way what upgrades do we have we only have warp gate right now <laughs> this is quite a bit of zealots and we do have what is going to be warp gate already done we see what is going to be a robo as well so Protoss, I don't really know if he has a purpose in this game. If he has a build in mind, he's going for what is Phoenixes out of one Stargate and going for a Robo and doesn't even have charge yet, but has a lot of Zealots. So I don't really think he, uh, he has a plan. I think he's just winging it right now. This Phoenix will be able to take out this Overlord. The second Overlord will go down. We do have a third Overlord right here on the outskirts of the main base. And I would fly this thing into the main base of the Protoss player. Because right now, I don't think Optera has a lot of vision right here. The only things he saw were that gateway and this pylon. We have a couple more warp gates on the way. We do have Charge researching on that Twilight Council. <laughs> And we have a decent amount of zealots to back it up. We have what is going to be another supply block. Oh, no. And we have a follow-up of four pylons. This is 400 minerals. This is an expansion. I would throw down two or maybe three pylons if I was really that concerned and then go for the Nexus. But Macha is floating 500 minerals as compared to the good spending of Optera right now. He's not floating virtually anything. He is at 200 minerals right now. But he was at almost none and now we have more money spending coming out of this red zerg player and we have a decent amount of roaches here as well followed up with some zerglings we have one one on the way for ranged zerg units taking a look at the upgrades plus one melee attack for or zerg is already done we also have burrow finished for the zerg player right here we have what is going to be a templar archives which will be good if Protoss is going for, for a heavy zealot play. Warping in Templar with the use of that Templar Archives will be a great way to even out his spending. If you're going for a heavy zealot play as Protoss, that does cause you to bank a lot of gas as we're seeing right now. He has 300 minerals to 800 gas, now 400 minerals. So, warping in a bunch of high Templar will even out his spending, will allow him to use that gas and Storms or Archons. Not necessarily a bad choice going against Zerg. Archons actually do extra damage to bio units, and guess what? Zerg is exclusively bio. They are a bio, a bio exclusive race. I was going to say a bio intensive race, but no, they're a bio exclusive race. So, Archons are just a solid unit. We have what is going to be a stasis ward towards the zerg side of the map this oracle checking out checking out what this looks like right here seeing if if it's safe to push out and accidentally baiting this queen into the stasis ward right here so this queen eating this stasis ward and actually wasting it this will allow zerg to run through the middle of the map to protect to protect his third base right here which is what i would do these hydralisks are on move command but we have exactly what i suspected a big push from the middle of the map to protect this this hatchery right here this was way too much for the protoss to handle so i do agree with that mass recall right there able to save at least a few of those zealots as we can see right here, only five of them survived. So, taking a look at the resources lost. 2,000 resources lost for the Protoss player to 1,500. Taking a look at the workers killed. One worker killed in that engagement. That is actually insane to me. We had so many zealots in the mineral line, but I guess they were focused on the army units. So, not a lot of workers killed right there. Oh my god. <laughs> We have a few more warp gates on the way, but I gotta say, looking at 
the the army composition for our blue protoss player i don't really think he has a plan right now he has a little bit of everything which tells me he doesn't really have a purpose in this game in terms of build he doesn't really know what he wants to go for where we see what is going to be a roach hydralisk combo coming out of optera so the one thing in starcraft 2 is as soon as you you queue up for a ladder game you want to make sure you have a plan you want to make sure if you know that you're going to be cheesing if you know that you're going to go for macro if you know you're going for ground or sky units you want to have a plan obviously the plan doesn't always come to fruition because you have to react to what the other player is doing but at the very least having a plan will ensure that you have a solid build order and oh my god optera He's just, he's eyeing this third base right here. Optera, if I were you, I'd just go for it. There's no reason to just sit around. Just go for it. Go for this base. It's totally open, man. Come on. It looks so good. <laughs> oh, no. He's not pushing out just yet. And this does give Maniac a little bit of time to macro up. We have a few Archons right here. We have some High Templar. Taking a look at the upgrades, we have Storm and Charge. But no armor or weapon upgrades for the Protoss, where we have 1-1 one, one for the Zerg player man optera deciding to forego the third base i guess he was a little bit afraid of overextending himself which i do understand but still when you're that far on the opposing side of the map you might as well just poke it and see what happens you can always run away later we have what is going to be a big engagement right here though maniac realizing this might not be an army he wants to touch but decides to go for it instead able to pull a few hydralisks from the main army and now throwing down some storms but as we can see storms not very effective against roaches roaches are super tanky against zealots and against storms they eat that for breakfast they don't give a damn <laughs> and that was a huge engagement for optera right there able to take out virtually everything there's only two immortals and three high templar left from that engagement we do have a warpin right here and we have a burrowed army but I gotta say, if you guys don't know this, if your units, if your roaches get softened up, they do heal faster when burrowed. So, if you did tank a lot of storms, just burrow your roaches if they get if they got softened up too much, and they will heal a lot faster. We have another set of storms right here, and another burrow. Aptera just running around on top of these roaches, and or maniac running around on top of these roaches but optera unburrowing and able to take out the rest of the protoss army and now we have what is going to be roaches knocking at the front door of the natural and we have what is going to be a bunch of zerglings running by to follow this up towards the natural base and a few towards the third base oh my god and we have some very big storms they will immediately kill the zerglings these roaches man so good at taking out taking those storm hits but oh my god dude this is so many zerglings optera he's like you know what we're done we're done playing this game we've been in this game for 13 minutes and i'm gonna win now we're done this is so many zerglings these zerglings chasing these probes down oh my god these zerglings taking out what is going to be the third base these phoenixes not doing anything these archons will do a lot of damage they're very good at doing splash damage against zerglings but i think this is too many for the archons to handle actually able to take out a ton right there this this archon 17 kills before it goes down this one 35 kills before it goes down so if you're going against a lot of zerglings go for archons but unfortunately uptera just out macroing the protoss player and <laughs> running through these zealots this was not an airtight wall and as we can see the zerglings running around in the natural base maniac throwing the gg giving the win to optera very cool gold versus gold level game i just think maniac did not have a plan going into this and it affected his build order and his unit composition and this gave optera the opportunity to macro up and ultimately win the game so very fun one if you enjoyed what you saw please consider shooting me a like and subscribe i would greatly appreciate it and if you want me to cast any of your own games i will leave my email in the description below and i'll see you guys on the next one